Good morning and welcome to this Good Friday All Age service from Christchurch Forward. I'm aware that people will be joining us this morning from all over the place and so in case you don't know who I am, my name's Chris Tufnell, I'm the curate at Christchurch Forward and welcome to my sitting room. It's great that you could join us uh, this morning. We are going to be thinking this morning about that event 2,000 years ago when the Lord Jesus gave his life for us, dying on the cross. And we're going to be reflecting together through this short service on why that event is still such good news for us and for all the world today. I'm going to begin by uh, reading a verse from the Bible. This is Jesus uh, speaking of himself and he says, The Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. And we're going to be remembering this morning that he was lifted up when he died on the cross and that we can have eternal life through him. We're going to be seeking in this time together to behold him, to fill our eyes and our heads with thoughts of the Lord Jesus and what he's done for us. And to help us in beginning to do that, Ben and the band are going to lead us in singing Come Behold the wondrous mystery. They all live together, so they're not breaking any rules by being together in this way. Um, I'm going to hand over to them now and they'll lead us. Come behold. Come behold the wondrous mystery in the dawning of the King. He the theme of heaven's praises, robed in frail humanity. In our longing, in our darkness, now the light of life has come. Look to Christ who condescended, took on flesh to ransom us. Come behold the wondrous mystery He the perfect Son of Man In His living, in His suffering Never trace nor stain of sin See the true and better Adam Come to save the hellbound man Christ the great and sure fulfillment of the Lord, in Him we stand. Come behold the wondrous mystery, Christ the Lord upon the tree. In the stead of ruined sinners Hangs the Lamb in victory See the price of our redemption See the Father's plan unfold Bringing many sons to glory Grace unmeasured, love untold mystery slain by death the God of life but no grave could e'er restrain him praise the Lord he is alive what a foretaste of deliverance how unwavering our hope Christ in power resurrected as we will be when Sing what a foretaste What a foretaste of deliverance How unwavering our hope Christ in power resurrected As we will be when he comes
We're going to sing an all age song together now. It's a song that reminds us of God's amazing love for us. That he would send his only son to die for us so that we might be forgiven and have life. This song has some actions again, so Maisie's going to help us with them. So join in as you can. And after we sing this song, the Crossy family are then going to come and pray. Oh, let's sing together. For God so loved the world, He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not die but have eternal life. L is for the love that He has for me, I am the reason He died on the tree. F is for forgiveness and now I am free E is to enjoy being in His company For God so loved the world He gave His only Son That whoever believes in Him Shall not die but have eternal life L is for the love that He has for me I am the reason He died on the tree F is for forgiveness and now I am free E is to enjoy being in His company Will you pray with us? Our Father, you are the source of every good thing and you ask for our love. In Christ, we love you. Father, all the world's affairs are in your hands and you ask for our trust. In Christ, we trust you. Father, you hold us in the palm of your hand and offer us refuge. In Christ, we hide ourselves in you. And Father, even when our love, our trust and our dependence fail, you still invite us back for a new start. In Christ, forgive us, we pray. Amen. Amen. Dear Lord, we're sorry for how we've ruined your beautiful world. In light of coronavirus, help us to know that this world is not home. Amen. Father God, we pray for people who feel vulnerable or weak at the moment. God, we remember that really we're all weak. But for those who feel extremely sad or scared or ill, please assure them that you are compassionate and completely sovereign, not only over each one of us, but also everything that we see around us. God, on this Good Friday, may we remember that to be weak and on our knees at the foot of your cross is actually a wonderful place to be. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, help those of us who have you as our refuge and strength to know the peace that surpasses all understanding and be sure of all your promises to us that you're working for our good and for your glory so that we can focus on helping and comforting those around us. Help us to use this time where everything is changing and there's so little that's certain to share the sure hope that we have and the gospel of a God who's not a stranger to suffering or brokenness. Thank you for the people you've put in charge of us during this time who are doing their best to minimize the damage of this virus. Help us to respect and obey their guidelines and decisions like you ask us to because whether we trust them or not, we do trust you. Amen. And Father, we pray for our church family here at Forward. Um, thank you that although we can't meet in person and in the flesh today, that we can meet by using the technology that you have provided us with um, to gather. We thank you for an opportunity on Good Friday to remember the cross of Christ. We thank you for his sacrifice on our behalf. And we pray 
that wherever we are today, um, as we're watching this and joining in, uh, would we feel both connected to you through the truth of the gospel and connected to one another um, as the community that you have set us in. Help us to keep loving each other well in this church family through this difficult time. Keep us mindful of each other's needs and looking to support one another sacrificially and pointing one another to the truths of the gospel. Help us to look outwardly too, um, reminding us of our friends and neighbours who still don't have a hope beyond death. Would you remind us to keep them in our prayers and to keep conversations that have already begun going? So we pray, Lord, that your gospel would reach far and wide through this time. Amen. Amen. And Father, we want to pray for our own hearts. Um, would each of us take time today to think about what Jesus has done for us on the cross? And as we do, would you help us to place all our hope in him? Not in who we are or the things that we do, but in your son who has loved us with love that we don't deserve and has died in our place. Amen. And shall we finish by saying the Lord's Prayer together? Together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and thus our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For you and them, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The mystery of the cross I cannot comprehend The agonies of Calvary You, the perfect Holy One, crushed your Son Who drank the bitter cup reserved for me Your blood has washed away my sin Jesus, thank you The Father's wrath completely satisfied Jesus, thank you once your enemy now seated at your table jesus thank you by your perfect sacrifice i've been brought near your enemy you've made your friend Pouring out the riches of your glorious grace Your mercy and your kindness know no end Your blood has washed away my sin Jesus, thank you The Father's wrath completely satisfied Jesus, thank you What's your enemy? Now seated at your table, Jesus, thank you. Lover of my soul, I want to live for you. Lover of Jesus, thank you. The Father's wrath completely satisfied. Jesus, thank you. Let's sing your blood. Has washed away my sin. 
Jesus, thank you. The Father's wrath completely satisfied. Jesus, thank you. Once your enemy, now seated at your table. Jesus, thank you. Lord Jesus, we do indeed thank you for your love, your mercy, your kindness shown to us through your death on the cross. And we pray that in the next few minutes, as we look at the Bible together, that you would help us to see you more clearly and to love you more deeply. Amen. Well, here we are at the start of the Easter weekend. And today is a special day we call Good Friday, a day when Christians all around the world are remembering that Jesus died on the cross. And to help us to do that together this morning, we're going to look at just one verse from the Bible together, from the start of John's Gospel, John chapter 1, verse 29. This is what it says. The next day, John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. At the moment, uh, many of us are spending a, a lot of time at home. Perhaps you're spending all your time at home. But a lot of us are also going out once a day for a walk or a run to get a bit of exercise. And if you've done that over the last few weeks, uh, I expect that you will have seen in people's front windows pictures of rainbows. Perhaps you've got a picture of a rainbow in your front window right now. It's something that children are doing all around the country at the moment putting up rainbows as a sign of hope, hope for better days ahead, hope in the middle of uncertain times. It's a lovely thing. Well, I've made my own uh, rainbow and uh, this feels very like Blue Peter, uh, but here's one I prepared uh, earlier. And I've made this to help us over the next few minutes to think about the hope that we have as Christians because of Good Friday. Uh, we see the reason for that hope in the verse I read a few moments ago. The first word John the Baptist says in that verse is an unusual word, but actually it's a word that we sang earlier on in our service. It's the word behold. Now, uh, we don't often do uh, use that word these days, uh, but it means, behold means to stop and to stare at something, to take it in and to enjoy looking at it. These days we see lots of images, uh, lots of pictures the whole time popping up on our TVs and tablets and smartphones. As you scroll through social media, uh, lots of pictures come up and then disappear again. And so maybe we're a little bit out of practice of stopping and fixing our eyes on just one thing. If you've ever walked around an art gallery, you probably would have noticed that there are chairs and benches along the way. And that's not just for people who've got tired legs. It's so that people can sit down and spend time really staring and taking in and enjoying a painting. That's what behold means. And on Good Friday, there is something for us to behold like that. What is it? Well, John the Baptist tells us in our verse uh, from the Bible, it says, he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. He's telling us to look at Jesus and he calls him the Lamb of God. Now that might strike us as rather strange. Why call Jesus a lamb? Well, there's a very good reason why. A long time ago, God told his people to sacrifice a lamb every year. It was a sign of God punishing the lamb instead of his people. The lamb would be punished for the sins of the people so the people could be forgiven. And so when they looked at a sacrificed lamb, it was a powerful reminder 
that they could only live because the lamb had died in their place. And this went on for years and years. Every year, people would bring along their lamb to be sacrificed. Every year, another lamb. And everyone would have to keep doing this. And it went on again and again and again and again and again and again until Jesus came. You see, those lambs didn't really take away people's sins at all, but they were a picture to help us understand what Jesus would do in the future. So that when Jesus came along and John the Baptist described him, as he does in the verse we're looking at this morning, as the Lamb of God, everyone would go, ah, you mean he's going to die in the place of the people to take away our sins so we can be forgiven? I get it. It suddenly made sense. But Jesus wasn't just another lamb in a long line of lambs. He was the lamb, the final lamb, the final sacrifice for sins. And he was the lamb of God. This lamb was being given by none other than God the Father for a very special purpose. That purpose was to take away our sins. And that happened on Good Friday when Jesus died on the cross, when Jesus, the Lamb of God, was sacrificed in our place. He was punished for our sins, all that we've done against God, so that we can be forgiven. And when we look at the cross and see Jesus dying there, when we behold him, it's a powerful reminder for us that the only reason we can be forgiven of our sins is because he was punished for them. The only reason we can have eternal life is because he died in our place. And when we understand that and behold him on the cross, it makes us very, very, very thankful for Jesus. What happened to Jesus on the cross? was a very bad and a sad thing. But we call it Good Friday because of all the good things that come to us through his sacrifice. If you're trusting in Jesus, your sins are forgiven. If you're trusting in Jesus, you have eternal life. Not only did Jesus die, but we'll remember in two days that Jesus rose again from the grave, defeating death. If you're trusting in him, he has defeated death for you as well. And you don't need to fear it anymore because he's promised to take you through it into a perfect and eternal world on the other side. That's why this is Good Friday. By taking away our sins, Jesus has brought us forgiveness and eternal life with him forever. Good Friday is very, very good news. And it's not just for you and me and a small group of people. John the Baptist said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. If you or I were to go and ask our neighbours from a safe distance over the garden fence, what's the biggest problem facing the world today? Well, I think that most people would probably answer coronavirus. But God tells us in the Bible there's a much bigger problem facing the world today and that's the problem of our sin. It puts us in danger of God's fair punishment. But Good Friday isn't just about showing us we've got a problem, it's about showing us that God has given us the answer, the solution, and that is Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus takes away the sin of everyone in the world who trusts in him. And that is very good news and it's the news the world needs most. We have a great hope because of the cross of Jesus and his death there. And as we'll remember on Sunday, because of his resurrection. 
We hope for so much more than the end of coronavirus, for so much more than the day when we will meet again, as wonderful as those things will be. No, we hope for so much more, a day far beyond the reach of all sickness and separation. A future safe at last from all that can harm us, together at last with the Lord who loved us on that cross and loved us, loves us still today. We have a grand and glorious hope made possible because of that very good Friday when Jesus died to take away our sins. And so today, friends, wherever you are, let me encourage you today to behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, to behold him in a special way. Maybe for the older ones, let me encourage you to take some time today to break away from the screens and other demands, to really behold Jesus and his cross, to meditate on what he did there for you. Perhaps spend some time turning over in your mind that verse that we've been thinking about, John 1, 29. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Don't just glance at him today and then look away. Behold him, his love and his beauty. For those who are younger, can I encourage you to make your own rainbow uh, like this one and to put the cross underneath it and to pop it in your front window. Or if you've already made a rainbow, maybe add a cross in as a reminder to you and everyone who passes by and sees it that we have a great hope because of the cross of Jesus. That could be a fun thing to do later today and a helpful way to behold him. I'm going to close with some words that we sometimes sing from a song called Yet Not I But Through Christ In Me and it just struck me the other day as I heard these words that they are especially helpful in the circumstances that we're all facing at the moment and as we reflect on the hope Good Friday gives us as Christians. No fate I dread, I know I am forgiven. The future sure, the price it has been paid. For Jesus bled and suffered for my pardon and he was raised to overthrow the grave. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us your son Jesus the lamb you provided to take away our sins. We are so grateful that our punishment has been paid for, our sins forgiven, and that we have a great hope of a wonderful future with you. Please help all of us today to behold your beautiful son, our crucified and living saviour, the hope of all the world, in whose name we pray. Amen. Well, very appropriately, having thought about beholding Jesus, we are going to sing together about turning our eyes to him, to the hillside where he died for us and the hope that we have as a result. I'll hand back to Ben and the band.
Jesus, to you we lift our eyes. Jesus, our glory and our prize. We adore you, behold you, our Savior ever true. Oh, Jesus, we turn our eyes to you. Turn your eyes to the morning and see Christ the lion away. What a glorious dawn, fear and death is gone, for we carry his life in our veins. Jesus, to you our eyes, Jesus, our glory and our prize. We adore you, behold you, our Savior ever true. Oh, Jesus, we turn our eyes to you. Every knee will bow, every tongue will shout, oh glory to Jesus alone. Jesus, to you we lift our eyes, Jesus, our glory and our Our Savior ever true, oh Jesus, we turn our eyes to you. Jesus, to you we lift our eyes. Jesus, our glory and our prize. We adore you, behold you, our Savior ever true. Oh, Jesus, we turn our eyes to you. Oh, Jesus, we turn our eyes to you. Well, in a few moments, we're going to pray together to close our service. But before we do that, there are a few things I'd love to mention to you. Uh, please join us this afternoon for our service, uh, Reflections from Around the Cross. That will be at 3 p.m. this afternoon. And then again, of course, on Easter Sunday morning at 10.30. It'd be great if you could join us for our service then. There's one other big bit of news that I want to share with you, and that is that in just six days time, we're going to be running a Christianity Explored course over video call using Zoom. And this is a really exciting opportunity for us to be reaching out to our local area with the good news of the Lord Jesus. It is such an easy way for people to take part in Christianity Explored from the comfort of their own homes, just sitting behind a computer or a tablet. Really easy for people to take part. And I think it could be really significant at the moment because a lot of people are asking big questions of life at the moment. And we believe that the answer to those questions, as we've been thinking about even this morning, are, are found in the Lord Jesus. And so Christianity Explored is a chance for people to consider who Jesus is, why he came, what it means to follow him. And we're going to be running that from next Thursday, the 16th of April at 7.30 in the evening. I would love you to be thinking about who you could invite to that course. Uh, to help you with that, at the end of this service video, um, you will see an advert come up that we've produced for social media. Um, would you as soon as this service finishes, uh, get your smartphone, go to Facebook, search Christchurch Forward 
and share that video uh, with your friends on Facebook. You'll also find on the web page for this service uh, on, on the Christchurch Forward website, you'll find a couple of downloadable flyers that you can print off and maybe put through a neighbour's letterbox if you'd like to invite people in that way. But this is a really unique and wonderful opportunity um, and I'm praying that we are going to get a lot of people joining us next Thursday. It's a course for people who are asking those big questions, want to look into Christianity, but it may be that you just really feel that you need a refresher in the basics of Christianity. It would be great if you signed up and joined us as well. You can do that at forwardchurch.co.uk forward slash CE. Well, we're going to close our time together now by praying a collect prayer together. Um, it's going to come up on the screen and you can join in if you'd like to. Eternal God, in the cross of Jesus, we see the cost of sin and the depth of your love. In humble hope and fear, may we place at his feet all that we have and all that we are through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, thank you again for joining us. And here's that advert for Christianity Explored. <laughs>